Hello friends, this is Revolver 44. I hope everybody has had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, this is my first video of the year and I'm bringing you today a Colt Snub Nose Revolver. This is uh, a Colt Detective Special. This gun was made in 1964. It's a blued steel snub nose revolver it's chambered and 38 special it has a round butt frame it has nice wood hardwood stocks with colt medallions it has a fixed ramp sight on the barrel. This is some, the previous on, I put a little red paint on here to help see better. It has a channeled sight along the top of the gun here, the frame. And there's your sight picture. It has um, serrations on the top here. Keep the glare down, it's a little less shiny. It has uh, serrations on the top of the trigger here, the hammer I mean. The hammer also has a firing pin built into it. It has a, a narrow trigger with serrations. Uh, the Colts, if you didn't know this already, um, have a, a pull cylinder release. See the gun is empty. It holds six rounds of 38 special. If you didn't know, um, the Colts rotate clockwise where Smith & Wesson's rotate counterclockwise. And if you have any question about which way the cylinder turns, just look at the direction this little bullet shape notches on the cylinder that is going this way so that means it's rotating clockwise if you ever have any question about which way the cylinder rotates it has a, a, a nice long ejector rod get your casings out without any trouble this gun here is it's got some wear on it but it functions perfectly. The grips are in excellent condition. Uh, a little history about, about these guns here. Uh, they started making these, Colt started making these in 1927. Uh, this was uh, derived from the police positive. There was a, a, a worker who worked for Colt. His name was John Henry Fitzgerald. And um, he came up with the idea of taking the, the uh, police positive gun and making a, a carry gun out of it, essentially. What he did was he uh, cut away the trigger guard bobbed the hammer and made a, um, a gun that was a lot easier to carry. He also shortened the, the uh, ejection rod too. This was before uh, Colt came out with the gun. But after Colt seeing what this person had done, he, there was, I guess he made about, I don't know, he, I don't know how many he made, but I guess Colt made about 200 of them. They're, uh, they're not very uh, av available now. They're pretty rare. But uh, that's uh, the idea. That's how the, Colt got the idea to make this revolver. Uh, they saw that what their employee had done 
and in 1927, Colt came out with the first series of this gun. Uh, of course, it didn't have the cutaway trigger guard. It, it would look, ba look basically just like this one. Um, the only difference was it had a shorter ejection rod. It had a full moon front sight blade. It had um, serrations, not serrations, but uh, checkering on the extractor button, the uh, cylinder release button here. It had, um, also it had uh, serrations, not serrations, but checkering on the trigger instead of, serrat instead of serrations. It also had a little bit longer grip than this one does. But they made that one from uh, 1927 until 1946 in a blue or a nickel finish. And then from 1946 to 1972, they made this type here. Uh, like I said, it has walnut grips. Uh, it was available for, uh, no, uh, that's not what I meant to say. The um, the grips it had plastic grips. That's what I meant to say. It had plastic grips from 1947 to 1954. And they did away with those and they went back to the wood grips. This um, Colt is made on the D-frame. They also um, made some of these guns for, in 1944 for the OSS, which was precursor to the CIA. Uh, they, were used, made, they were made for the U.S. military, military during World War II. Uh, those are extremely rare. Um, one of those recently sold for eight thousand dollars an auction and i recently saw one too on uh gun broker that they were asking ten thousand dollars for it i think it's still up for sale now but it's a, like i said it's a really nice nice snub nose revolver it's a nice it's in good very good uh, working condition like i said it has some holster wear on it but it doesn't have any rust on it. The, the back strap is pretty worn. You can see the balloon is all off the back strap. But it, it's in generally pretty good condition considering it was made in 1964. <clears throat> the, um, the next generation of this gun was made from uh, 1972 to 1986. And I can show you one of those. I did a previous review on it this is the next generation model now uh, this is made, made like i said from 1972 to 1986 basically the same gun the only difference being is the barrel um, it has the same ejector rod people say what's the, the difference is the shrouded ejector but basically the whole barrel is different on this gun compared to that one. Uh, this is a heavier barrel and it has a ramp sight, a long ramp, tapered ramp sight on it. But it has, it looks like it has the exact same ejection rod. And the rest of the gun is pretty much identical. If you look from the barrel, from my uh, with barrel ends back it looks pretty much exactly the same I just wanted to show you that for a quick reference but uh, 
if you could find one of these, it's a it's a nice little revolver. Uh, they, they're going for um, I don't know, probably between four four hundred dollars and maybe eight to nine hundred dollars at your local gun stores, depending on condition. But it's still a, a very viable uh, handgun. The whole six rounds. Where, where a lot of your other ones, the small, only hold five. Like uh, your, your Smith & Wesson J-Frames and your, um, your Ruger SP Series, SP-101. Those only hold five rounds. So this is a, a very good option. Let's um, check the weight. Twenty-two point seven five ounces. That's pretty light. Compare that to the um, the newer version. Twenty-two point nine three. It's almost identical. Let's uh, see what the trigger pull weight is. Wow, three pounds, 10 ounces, can that be right? That's really light. Five pounds, nine ounces, that's more like it. Five pounds, three ounces, okay, that's more like it. Let's try single action now. Two pounds, 1.9. That's very light. Somebody might have modified this trigger. That's very possible. Well, let's see how it is dimensionally now. Okay, the overall length, I like to do it from, yeah, we do it this way. Overall length of the gun is, say, six and three quarter inches long. By four and three eighths tall. Check the cylinder diameter. 1.370, 1 it's 1 and 3 eighths, 1 and 3 eighths diameter. Like I said, it's not very heavy, really, for a steel gun. This is an excellent uh, revolver to, for, for carry, um, I think, or for a backup. There's nothing wrong with 38 Special. I'll tell you, 38 Special, you could put some hollow points in this without any trouble and that's a that's a good defensive firearm yeah i would say it is i like these grips these are in an excellent condition Okay, that's about all I have for this gun today. Um, I'll try and get something else off for you soon. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, and I'll try and get something else off for you in the next couple weeks. So uh, be safe and have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.